So uh, thank you very much. I am uh, David Dietz, honored to be a member of the Old Guard and honored to be program chair for this month of July here. Uh, so this morning, we are extremely lucky with the uh, presenter. We're gonna have a, a personal buddy of mine. Uh, Dr. Robert Rubino is a former summit councilman and council president. He's lived in summit for 27 years. He's married to Susan Rubino, who is also a doctor, and they have three lovely kids. I met them all, great folks, very accomplished in their own right. So Dr. Rubino is a local physician and active in the community through various organizations and has served on many, many boards. He truly gives back to the community. That includes president of the Board of Health, of the Board of School Estimates, the Red Cross, the Summit Park Line, which you're going to hear more about today, and the University Hospital in Newark. His most enjoyable service was as a head coach in Summit Junior Baseball. Dr. Rubino loves sports. I first came across uh, him uh, when we got to play tennis together close to 20 years ago. Professionally, Dr. Rubino was the founder of the Rubino OBGYN group which grew to becoming the largest independent OBGYN group in the state of New Jersey. It was later acquired by Axia Women's Health in the year 2020. Dr. Rubino has been published in multiple peer review journals and has expertise in minimally invasive pelvic surgery. Without further ado, I introduce to you Dr. Robert Rubino. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, David, as well as the invitation to um, speak to, I'm not so sure the moniker is correct, the old guard, just sitting here for the last 25 minutes, I think the name might be better suited as the vanguard. <laughs> I mean, the panoply of topics that came up, um, I almost felt like I was in a college seminar for the last half hour. So. Uh, Quite an interesting uh, group you have assembled here and topics I hope to be invited back for, uh, to be an audience member for some of the, uh, uh, the topics you have on the agenda. Um, but to tonight's, um, uh, or today's uh, talk, uh, my talk today is uh, entitled The Summit Park Line, uh, From the uh, Forgotten Victory to the Remembered Landscape. And uh, <clears throat> So uh, the Summit Park Line, what is it? Uh, you've heard a little bit today. It's, it's kind of modeled after the High Line in New York City, which is essentially what they call Linear Park, uh, kind of designed to uh, weave through a community uh, for bikes and, and pedestrians. It's the first new park in Summit in 85 years. Uh, the last park we had turned out pretty well called Memorial Field, which the city of Summit um, uh, purchased from Oaknall for a dollar, which is about a million times more than we paid for the Summit Park line land, because we got it for free. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the, the leaders of the community back in 1935 were prescient enough to know that uh, grabbing that park space would be a gift for generations to come. And uh, I kind of see as the Summit Park line is our opportunity to uh, give something forward to the communities that, that uh, uh, we precede. And hopefully in a hundred years from now, folks will still be enjoying the Summit Park Line. So what are we about? Well, uh, first and foremost, we're about connections and, and really um, it's about physical connections. East Summit, and, and I often field a lot of calls from, from uh, folks from East Summit when I was a councilman about you know, difficulties with uh, accessing uh, downtown Summit uh, as a pedestrian. It's not easy just for, because of the topography. Uh, and so I really did want to create a connection that's safe, easy, and straightforward uh, for the citizens of East Summit, but also for the rest of Summit, for them to get to the wonderful points of interest in East Summit, which are inclusive of uh, you know, the, the rec center, uh, which is newly renovated, the city pool, Hidden Valley Park, and Bryant Park, and also to help create some traffic going down to the downtown where folks may spend a few dollars in a restaurant or, or a store. Um, but it, it's also about metaphysical connections. You know, we're trying to connect neighbors to neighborhoods, um, create foot traffic and have people start to circulate and meet their neighbors. 
And I think that's more, even more important than the, the physical connections, as well as the connections people develop when they volunteer around the, the park. Um, it's definitely about conservation in nature. Uh, this land has been abandoned for over 50 years, overgrown, not very pretty. And you know, we're a 99% developed community. So we're kind of starving for uh, some open space for which to you know, just walk, get some healthy uh, activity, or just to sit and contemplate and enjoy nature a little bit, because it is quite biodiverse within that uh, linear park. And, and, and this leads nicely into the concept of health. We, are, uh, we were recognized by an organization called Park Rx a few years ago, which um, uh, is an organization that prescribes parks as part of the actual physical regimen for people with lifestyle diseases, notably um, related to diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, as well as um, emotional issues, anxiety, depression. There's lots of peer reviewed data suggested that time in a park on a daily basis with a routine is quite helpful for those with all of those maladies, but in particular for, for mental health. Um, we're about practicality, um, you know, uh, it's an alternative means of transportation. And um, for, for myself, uh, getting to down some, downtown Summit a lot, I just drive, drive my bike or walk because I don't have to worry about the damn park, which I, I think is uh, key. But for folks who live in East Summit um, to get to downtown, this is a great little uh, pathway utilized right now by a lot of the neighbors in Denman Place, whereas the phase one is up and running and soon to be used by all the neighbors on Henry Street in the area east of, east of there. Um, it, it's about art, and I think I heard uh, last week, uh, we didn't plan this, but uh, we do partner with the Summit Park, uh, Summit um, uh, Arts Foundation, Public Art, and um, art has really been shown to be somewhat therapeutic, public art, done tastefully, which I think the Summit Public Art has done. And I'll show you some examples of that public art uh, in, on the park line. And, and lastly, and not by, by order of importance, but community engagement. Um, th this has been a truly grassroots effort, started uh, in 2015, and um, it's been funded and built largely by residents in, in the community. So, and and um, it's also a community meeting place, and I, and I hope for that to grow over time. So why is the land important? Well, um, as I've come to appreciate as I was researching the land to try to get it from the state of New Jersey, um, there's a lot of uh, colonial era, Revolutionary War history as well, as well some industrial history. Um, so I, I think it's always important to, to kind of know where you've been before you go forward. Um, it's strategic in, in meaning that uh, because it's a rate and elevated um, pathway, it's, uh, I think, a little safer and, and, and pedestrians and bikers often prefer having that elevation to see upcoming threats and also enjoy a panoramic view. Uh, George Washington saw it strategic for other reasons. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, a need, I, I think all of us can appreciate uh, at the height of the pandemic, we were all cooped up. And the park line really became instrumental for the neighbors in the area, just a safe place to get out see a neighbor or two at a safe distance and enjoy some outdoor time. And uh, that today is, is still important for the folks in the neighborhood. Some may have you know, suppressed conditions. They enjoy the park line because it's safe, it's open, and it's pretty. Um, and ultimately, it's important because it's underutilized, underutilized uh, land. Uh, again, in a 99% developed community, we really shouldn't have any green space that we're not taking advantage of. And this you know, is 1.2 miles in total length. It's um, missing one bridge. So it's, it's, uh, it's uh, separate right now. I'll get to how we're fixing that in a minute. Um, but you know, it's valuable land. We had an estimate, it's worth about $13 million. So it's um, you know, land we shouldn't be letting sit fallow. So on to the history part, I just want to spend a little time about what occurred on this land before we took it over. This is somewhat of a heroic uh, painting of the Forgotten Victory, which is the Battle of Springfield, fought June 26, 1780. I'm sure, given the, uh, the breadth and depth of the uh, talent in this audience, a lot of you probably already know about this and can probably school me on it. Um, 
But it, I think it's an important um, Revolutionary War tidbit that we should note. And this is a map taken from a book by a gentleman named Thomas Fleming, who wrote about um, the battle itself and also kind of wove in the, the human uh, element and tragedy into the story. And if you ever get the chance, uh, it's in the New Jersey section of the Summit uh, Public Library. It's a great read. Uh, <clears throat> this is a close up, a study of this map, which points out, by the way, do I have a pointer on here? Oh, I do. Maybe I'll take that out. Uh, so this red line is the ridge of the uh, where the park line starts, part of the Nork Mountains or the short hills of the Nork Mountains. And then um, right down here, this little uh, blue, this little blue spot is, uh, oh, how do I go back? How do I? Um, <clears throat> And uh, you, you might have heard a militiaman in June of 1780 say, hey, listen, why don't you meet me at the tavern tonight? I hear there's some activity east of here. The British may be coming. And uh, Bryant, Bryant Tavern, Bryant Pond was an important meeting place for strategizing as well as um, during the battle. It was one of the, uh, the spots where they had reinforcements kind of uh, along with Washington's plan of how to have a pincer grasp against the British as they came through. Uh, the Hobart Gap, which is where the current Route 24 goes to the Short Hills Mall. So um, Washington was uh, prescient in realizing that was a strategic spot. But, uh, pick up. Uh, as you can see over on the right here, uh, where my arrow is is just a, a further demonstrative of that's the, the ridge where the park line is. And just uh, east of there, where the arrow is slowly going, is... Uh, where the uh, the troops were deployed as a backup for if the first line broke in Springfield, which it did a little bit. And that's where uh, the cannon fire up on the ridge of the mountains were fired down on the British, repelling them where they eventually retreated back uh, to Staten Island before they did a lot of damage. Uh, this is just a diorama, which I thought was kind of interesting. And this is looking westward from Springfield and the arrow the black arrow is pointing to the red arrow where the, um, the, the tavern was and where the troops were stationed, which, uh, and behind them, they were fortified with cannon from the, the ridge where the park line and the uh, short hills are. It's a picture, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Cannonball House in Springfield, which is one of the last structures uh, standing during the Battle of Springfield. As the British retreated, they torched the town um, and a lot of pathos ensued. It was, you know, Sometimes these things are glorified and forget the real human element of, of, of the revolution. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this is um, a statue in front of the Presbyterian Church of the rebel Reverend James Caldwell, who um, <clears throat> his wife had been murdered by a, a British troop about two weeks prior during the, the Battle of Connecticut Farms, just east of there in Union. And um, <clears throat> during the, the, the Continental Regulars and the militia were fighting the British, holding them at bay. They're running out of wadding paper. So he ran up to his church on horseback, grabbed the hymnals and rode back and threw the hymnals to the men. The hymnals written by a guy named Watts. And he said, give them Watts, boys. And that really was instrumental helping them hold the, the British troops at bay until the cannon fire could, could um, uh, rain down on them. So we all know how that turned out. British eventually retreated to Staten Island and realized they couldn't get to Washington because of that Hobart Gap. And it was uh, quite a strategic victory because then they realized they had to go south to Virginia to uh, try to divide the, the Union that way. And that, as you know, turned out in our favor. So there's about 100 years of agrarian um, uh, peace and prosper prosperity in the area, save for the five years of the Civil War. And then the Iron Horse came through in the late 1800s to the area. This sign is one of the interactive signages that was donated by the Tri-State Rail Historical Society because they recognized what we were doing and wanted to make sure that folks realized what, was, uh, what occurred um, on the site of the uh, Rawway Valley Rail Line, which is what the, the name of the rail was. It's a brief marketing piece that was developed uh, to promote the, the commuter rail that was established on the, uh, the Rawway Valley line. Phoebe Snow is a fictional character because they use anthracite coal, which didn't make the passengers clothes dusty. So Phoebe Snow was always Snow White when she rode, even when she got off the rail. So it was the first time they ever used a, a live person for a fictional character for marketing purposes. Another first historically. 
The Great Train Robbery, which is a very popular silent film, uh, was uh, filmed in part on the Park Line. Um, Hollywood was in New York at that time. So there was lots of activity back and forth from Manhattan to the, uh, the Broadway Valley Railroad. So you might've heard all aboard in Summit at the train station. This may not be recognizable to you, but the, um, the train station is uh, just below where Overlook Hospital now stands. Uh, to give you perspective, this is across the street from Salerno Duane. That apartment building is just to the east of that. That's where the current temporary access to the park line is. And very rudimentary schematic I drew in there but that's roughly where that train station was. So flip it back. So the next time you drive by Salerno Duane and you look to that green area in the right, you'll know what was there. Uh, <clears throat> this is just a, a very kind of locally famous picture of a car going off the rail line in 1935. Believe it or not, they got this car back with a crane up and running and the bridge repaired within about an hour because there's minimal damage to each, but it looked a lot worse than it was. <laughs> Um, again, this audience I know is uh, a lot of Summit folks, some in Providence, some from the surrounding area, uh, but this is a, a local shot of the area where Orchard Street is, and a lot of you may wonder why they call it Orchard Street. Oh, here's a great picture. This is looking south and east over uh, the rail line. Um, you can see here, this is largely orchards. Uh, this is the train coming up, this is circa 1899. Right over this arrow is sitting on the bridge. That's Morris Avenue. Um, that bridge was removed in the early 2000s overnight. That's the bridge that we're about to install uh, in October of this year, a pedestrian bridge uh, connecting the two, uh, the two legs of the park line, so making it one contiguous uh, path. And this was yesterday, same perspective. As you can see, the landscape has changed a lot. Uh, behind these trees are nothing but houses. Here's the old railway, and here's where that bridge will be going in. But um, uh, important to know kind of where we were before we know where we're going. Again, a schematic of the railroad in um, uh, the railway uh, valley line. The Summit Park line is right here. Uh, this little area where it bends, where it bends out a little bit, is the spur that goes down to Baltusrol. There used to be a Baltusrol train station. Wealthy investor put it in there uh, in the early 1900s to facilitate train travel from a lot of the members were in New York City. Uh, and then at the top left there is the current uh, train line. So enough of the history, uh, the, the kind of the heart of the matter here is the park line itself. And as you can see, you know, we're kind of want to move from our black and white industrial past to our hopefully colored future which is really kind of getting back to the roots of the area and more of um, uh, not so much agriculture, but at least a nature setting instead of an industrial one. This is the uh, bridge going over uh, Ashwood Avenue. So I'm going to spend a couple of slides time just to kind of orient folks. To a lot of folks don't know where the park line is. So hopefully with these aerials, we kind of give you a little bit more of a sense of where it is. This um, uh, is a satellite setting. Hey, Joel, do you have a mouse we can hook up? Um, no, 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 no. All right, never mind. Uh, so uh, this is the Overlook Hospital here to the left. This is this pink line is the current park line, at, which is up and functional. And the bridge soon to be installed. Um, and then this, this pink line going all the way through um, down to uh, Hidden Valley and Bryant Park. Um, another unobstructed satellite view, as you can see here, the, the, the mouse is Mars Ave, and then uh, this is the uh, abandoned railway going from Henry Street down to East Summit. Overlook Hospital is in the top left corner there. And this is kind of a, a stylized, oh, wonderful, thank you. Yeah. Um, This is a stylized uh, version of a satellite map where, um, again, the, the park line starts right up here, this summit, and the, the entire railway is about 11 miles, and it, it, it connects to something called East Coast Greenway, which is essentially an I-95 of abandoned railway from Florida to Maine, and it 
comes through Eastern Union County. So the grand plan would be to eventually connect the Summit Park line all the way down to this, uh, where the, uh, the terminus of this uh, pink arrow to the East Coast Greenway. So any ambitious pedestrian or biker can start on the perimeter <laughs> downtown summit and get themselves to anywhere on the East Coast from Florida to Maine. Right now, I'm just trying to get to Bryant Park, but um, that's the grand plan. And uh, again, uh, to drive home the point, uh, the pink area here is the current existing park line. Uh, once that bridge goes in right here, then we'll have a full full shot all the way down to Hidden Valley and Bryant Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Hidden Valley Park, but it's beautiful. You can see a lot of equestrian activity down there. You kind of feel like you're in Vermont when you're really just in East Summit. And if you can see these uh, parallel white lines or the train track continuing all the way down to Kenilworth. And uh, this is the revised pathway. So Celgene didn't want us to go through their property. The new owner actually wants us to go through their property. So this blue line represents kind of um, the new path, which would be staying to the original rail line, which makes it easier and less costly for us to uh, rehabilitate it. So this is a great view from the northern end of the park line. Uh, full disclosure, it is a magnified view with telephoto lens. But on a clear day, you have a great view of Manhattan just a little smaller, but with binoculars or a telephoto lens, you can get that kind of clarity. And, uh, you know, kind of what we see, uh, this is what General Washington saw. We saw the advantage of it. And in fact, my inspiration for the park line as a physician, I was uh, one early February morning on my way to deliver a baby at Overlook. And I saw the sun coming up behind the skyscrapers in Manhattan. And it just kind of caught me. And I thought, gee, there's gotta be somewhere in summit for the public to have this view. But at the time I was a uh, council a member, I went down to the uh, uh, tax, uh, to the uh, city administrator's office. We found the park line, the land, and he said to me, well, it's owned by the state of New Jersey, forget it. The amount of bureaucracy you're gonna have to go through, you'll never get it. Definitely not the right thing to say to me. So uh, after about a year of shuttle diplomacy between uh, myself in, in summit, county freeholders and or the commissioners that they're now called and uh, the governor's office, we were able to get the land from the Department of Transportation for what we call a perpetual lease agreement. And as I mentioned earlier, got it for free. So that was a great win for, uh, for the city of Summit. So uh, vestiges and harbingers, this is kind of what we, what we, uh, what it was, what we took over and this is a stylized version of what we hope to be. And um, to get there, it took a lot of work. And this is kind of a, uh, what the park line looked like. It's Japanese knotweed. It's an invasive plant. A lot of you may have encountered it in your own property. It was brought over actually from Japan by the Olmsted brothers who not only built Central Park, but they built Bryant Park. And it was used as a slope stabilizer. They learned not too long after they brought it over that it was too aggressive and it takes over everything. So uh, we had, it was about eight feet tall where it was in the park line. We enlisted the, um, so the Boy Scouts, they did the initial clearing. And again, to the volunteer uh, level of effort, um, we probably saved about $300,000 in landscaping fees with the use of the, uh, the Boy Scouts. In fact, the Eagle Scout who what got his wings from this project, his parents donated the bridge that's about to, um, about to be installed. They were so happy with the, uh, the outcome. So we're about halfway there. If you go on the park line phase one that exists today east of um, Overlook, you'll see a lot of what you see here. We have a nice paved path. We have lots of interesting vegetation, park benches, see some kids and families hanging out or um, having um, a little quiet time. But we're, we're about halfway there. Uh, so I'm confident we're going to get all the way there. But the question is, how do we get there? Well, a lot of sweat equity. Uh, this is a picture of uh, my son and myself clearing. There's a hiking path along Morris Avenue that leads to the current uh, phase one of the park line. And that was land that was uh, right away was given to us by Overlook Medical Center. And uh, we cleared it and made a very nice um, hiking path down to the, the train line itself. We also got there with 
equity, equity. Um, I'm sure uh, there's lots of financial experts in this audience. Uh, at the time when I was uh, council president, we had delivered the first tax break to the citizens of Summit in 40 years. So on the heels of that, the last thing we wanted to do is introduce a new tax. So um, we made sure that it was not gonna take any taxpayer money. All the funding was private. We started a 501c3 and uh, we got our funding from individuals, uh, foundations, uh, grants and um, uh, corporations. And, and I'll, I'll show some of the folks who supported us later on. So there's some more of the volunteers along the way. This gentleman here in the maroon is a guy named Jeff Hankinson. He's a board member, he's a local dentist. Some of you may know him. He's our trail master. And he really is kind of the, um, the engine behind clearing and planning the park line and helping us develop it. So he's a wonderful gentleman. Uh, on any given weekend, you'll see him down here there with his bandana and uh, his work boots, um, uh, orchestrating volunteers. And as I mentioned, it's a community effort. Uh, this is just a, a typical example of, uh, we put out a call to our, we have about 500 volunteers. We put up a Facebook post that we're building a butterfly garden. We need to clear the land of rocks and things. So we got about 30 volunteers uh, one afternoon and uh, they worked great, we worked hard all day. And, and this is just a typical scene you'll see on any day that we put out a call to action to the community volunteers. But it's not all work, you know, it's a lot of play too. So we have community events. And this was one where uh, we put out a grid of a yard wide for each kid who signed up and they got to plant whatever they wanted. We provided the plants and they came out. We had a great time on Earth Day last year. And uh, we're not, we don't go dormant in the winter. We also have, and I bought some for those willing to try it, it's Parkline Maple Syrup. Um, so every mid-February, uh, we tap the trees. Uh, we have some local kids in the community, we teach them how to do it. And we get the sap, we make about 10 gallons of uh, maple syrup. And believe me, it's a lot of work. Um, so any of you folks I, who wanna try, I bought some on the natural maple syrup, it's kind of gold. And um, we, we strain it, but some of the sugar binds with minerals and it creates a niter at the bottom. You don't have to have that, but it's perfectly fine on your pancakes. So you might wanna try it. We made a, um, a darker version put a little brown sugar to keep the brown color instead of the, uh, uh, the more uh, golden color. And that gentleman there to the right is uh, Jay Cho. He's a neighbor of the park line on, uh, on Mars Avenue. And he fell in love with the project and he's up there every weekend volunteering, planting, helping Jeff Hankinson, who's one of our board members, very creative guy. And he helped spearhead the uh, maple syrup effort. So, you know, again, this is, also about practicality, it's about safety. So I don't know if uh, folks in this audience are familiar with the triple threat intersection, the pedestrian intersection going down Mars Avenue where it meets with Glenside, but they have to, pedestrian has to go downhill or uphill here, here, and here. And, the, and here's, this picture's from yesterday. These, these are these pedestrians. And I, I literally root for them when I see them walking because it's such a treacherous, um, uh, uh, inter, inter pass to go by. Uh, just east of there is where that bridge I showed you earlier is, and that's going to be a conduit for folks to go up and just uh, bypass that entire intersection. Um, and, and as you can see here, uh, this is where the bridge will be hopefully installed by mid-October, and that intersection is just west of there. So that would be a real um, contribution to pedestrian safety and helping folks from the East Summit. Or if you live in the other side of Summit, you, your kid wants to go down to the Summit Aquatic Center, get on their bike and go right across there. So uh, this is a hiking trail. This is, uh, as you can see that little white SUV here, that's Morris Avenue right there. This is Lower Overlook Road. So if you're traveling East, Overlook is on your left-hand side. That's the entrance to the hiking trail. She's got a really nice view of Manhattan in the, in the winter time. Um, so we, we transformed this over the course of two winters. Gets a little steep. So we put in some railroad tied stales, uh, stairs. Makes it a lot easier for folks to negotiate. And then when you get down to the end of the hiking trail, this is a, an early version of the park line where we were able to finally pave it over the knotweed. Um, 
And this is the, the part of the butterfly garden that we set up. Again, competitive inhibition of the knotweed is part of how we neutralized it over time between that and kind of mechanical deforestation over several seasons. And uh, public art. So this is the hiking trail. You see those little orange, uh, those are lungs uh, created by a local artist as kind of a thank you to the healthcare workers at Overlook Hospital who use the park line a lot just to take a break and, and recharge themselves and thanking them for kind of preserving a, a lot of our lungs uh, during the, the pandemic. And this is actually our first installation. Some of you may have noticed this a couple of years ago. It's a bunch of concentric rings that were a part of the railing along the uh, the hiking path. You can see from RSAB. It was really beautiful. The artists actually were the, the local residents in that at the farmer's market. Folks would come and they would um, be able to glue the, the little color tiles on these concentric rings. Then the artist herself, with the help of uh, Jay Cho, uh, the gentleman you saw earlier, um, constructed the whole fence. And for about three months, it lasted until a nor'easter and uh, a couple of vandals uh, did some trouble to it and uh, uh, we took it down. But it was, it was a wonderful installation at the time that it was up. And if you were there this morning, you might see a vision like this with your walking down with your coffee and your morning paper. Uh, the park line is definitely a place where you see a lot of folks in the morning uh, taking a little quiet time before they start their day. Again, uh, kind of harking back to that mental health piece. It's a great place to get some uh, peace and quiet. And uh, this is what it might look like today as well. Uh, we have a few more plant things there, but you, you can enjoy just the, you know, the, the different colors, the austerity, the rock there that we've cleared over the years. And this is the northern end of the, the trailhead uh, by Broad Street. And uh, these uh, the park line in the winter, a lot of people like it because of uh, you know just it's a, a plane of snow. Some, sometimes the, you'll see some cross country skiers <laughs> using the, the trail as well. And this is a rock garden here on the right, uh, also built uh, by Jeff Hankinson as a tribute to the healthcare workers. Uh, it's in full bloom right now. He always uh, updates it every summer uh, with fresh flowers. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice um, contemplative setting. And this is a view last uh, September during the time when they had the lights up in honor of the 9-11 uh, um, memorial. Uh, again, it's a, it's a great view on a clear day uh, from Manhattan. This is a diorama that we built. We had an artist in Milburn, uh, our, our teacher build it because it helps conceptualize for folks of what the park line is. And uh, as you can see here, this is uh, Broad Street and Summit. And here's the park line itself. Here's Morris Avenue, and then uh, the East Summit neighborhoods that it goes through, and terminating in Bryant Park. And we kind of make a roadshow out of our diorama. You can see here we're at the farmers market with uh, some of you folks may recognize Frank Masiosi there. He's also a board member. Uh, my daughter and my wife, and uh, uh, Al Leiter, one of the local um, celebrities, stopped by to lend his support to the project. This is an artist's rendering of the bridge that uh, we will be installing soon uh, over Morris Avenue. Um, it'll kind of be put in the same way the old one was taken out. Overnight, crane comes in, drop it, secure it. Um, so hopefully with minimal uh, complications for the public. I'm sure there's some engineers in the audience to show that we're serious and we're organized. Um, these are some of the elevations, the engineering elevations that we're using make sure the structure is uh, sound and also is well above the uh, minimum height for the Department of Transportation. So there's no trucks getting stuck in there. So where do we go from here? This is phase two. So we're ready after you get off, off, that, off that bridge. That's what you're looking at. We've cleared the land. We're gonna be putting up some uh, green screening along here to, to give some privacy to the neighbors and then putting in down a adorable but comfortable surface for folks to be able to walk easily down uh, to Bryant Park or ride their bike. Ride their bike. This is uh, Ashwood. That bridge is intact. It looks kind of the same as it does right now, very industrial. So one of the things we're raising funds for right now is to provide uh, attractive fencing and uh, decking over that bridge. And there's one 
further east of that on Russell Place to, to um, further improve the, the amenity. And this is still aspirational, but our hope is that we create the, the northernmost part of the park line as kind of a gateway to downtown summit and kind of uh, uh, reminiscent of uh, the, the history that's there, a covered bridge, but the modern version of the covered bridge, we'd like it to be steel and glass. So looking west, you'll see downtown summit. Looking east, you'll see Manhattan. So we see that as a, um, a, a nice entry point since uh, it's such a great community and we think uh, East Summit um, needs a solid connection like this, and it should be uh, commensurate with the uh, uh, with the surrounding environment. So, who supports us? This list is by no means uh, exhaustive, but uh, most importantly, the citizens of Summit. This is a true grassroots effort that has been um, uh, building since 2015, and uh, it's been funded um, by multiple organizations and many individuals. Um, Bristol Myers Squibb, now Celgene, is a big supporter. The Reeves Foundation, which I'm sure you may all be aware of. The Summit Foundation, Investors Foundation. Uh, uh, the federal government has just reached out to us uh, through our congressman. Uh, we, we were approved in the uh, Congress, in, in, in the House, for $250,000 uh for funding of the recovery act from the pandemic it still has to go through the senate they don't see any potential barriers that should happen in september so we're hopeful but it's not a done deal yet uh, and then uh, these are the references that we we use when i say special thanks to patty miola who's the um uh, from the summit historical society some of the more arcane references she helped me out with but a lot of great resources and, and the Forgotten Victory, as I said, it's a great, it's a great read and really can kind of help inform anybody who's interested about uh, the revolutionary history in the area. And uh, that's our logo. That's our um, website. I have a, a little bit of merch left. Here's a hat for anybody who wants to and a couple of Summit Park Line t-shirts and anybody willing, I've eaten this, it's fine. Uh, it's the <laughs> Park Line syrup. And uh, thank you for your attention today. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, we have to answer. Okay, we do have some questions online. John Tomaszewski. Yeah, hi, great uh, thing that you put in. I, I did the one in New York and really enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm looking forward, didn't even know this existed. Is there any suggested place at the park if you're a little ways away from there? I didn't hear that last part. Did you repeat the last part? Parking. Yes. Oh, yes. So parking, yes, there is parking. Um, with rail trail, you want to encourage people to utilize it. You want to have some parking. You don't want to make it make too much parking because you know one of the goals here to encourage bike and pedestrian acts uh, utilization. Um, there, we're working with the county to provide about eight to ten spots on the. Eastern Park, right by Bryant Park, is an abandoned um, transfer station for electrical transfer station. So we're working with the county to provide that as parking access. There'll be, right now they're redoing the fire department on Broad Street and Summit. Once that's done, there's a plan to narrow Broad Street because it doesn't need to be that wide anymore because it's wide because of the trestle. Uh, so we want to get some angle parking. So you can park currently on Broad Street and walk down to it. We want to create more angle parking as you get closer to Broad Street. And we want to create um, some spots in the middle uh, in um, East Summit. Uh, we want to be very uh, conscious of the neighbors in the neighborhood. They don't want us to have too much parking because we want it to be a destination, but not too much of a destination where you get traffic. So it's a delicate balance. And we're going to kind of, um, you can't do all that in the abstract. You have to see how the utilization goes to how much parking you provide, or in some cases take away. But yes, that, there's parking currently on the northern end on the street, on Broad Street. It's a short walk uh, to the trail uh, entrance. And then uh, there'll be some uh, parking on Mars Ave, and you can access that point once the bridge goes up. There'll be stairs there, as well as uh, we're contemplating some ADA access there as well. Any questions from the audience here? If, uh, if so, raise your hand. <clears throat> Mark? Mark? 
Yes. You, you want to call? Yes, if, if uh, Dr. Rubino could repeat the question, that was uh, great. You mentioned the questions and points. One is that you said it was almost all private financing. So, in the long term, how will the park be maintained? Uh, that's a great question. The other and... half of that is will there be seasonal maintenance in the fall when there are leaves? in the winter so the question is since it's all privately funded how will maintenance be funded going forward and when i was uh, president of the common council we thought of that and i thought if we're giving the city 13 million dollars of free land and we're paying to build it i i don't think it's too much of an ask for the city to maintain it you don't have to hire any additional staff we have a parks department so we have a resolution with the city of summit that they maintain the land and they will maintain it like any other park to clean it up in the in the winter and take the leaves in the in the fall and maintain the lawn and in the beginning you know they were a little bit um forgetting about it on their, their maintenance schedule but you know with uh, gentle reminders now they're fully on board but yeah uh, the construction is privately funded uh, if our, our position always was, if we're giving you a park, you better well take care of it. Uh, Walt Meisner. Walt, you have to unmute. Actually, at the, uh, some part of it near the building that houses the interns, you know, the apartment building. I, I only heard part of your question. Can you repeat it? No, no, I used to, a number of years ago, I've actually been there. So I've seen the art two exhibit, you know, with the rings and um, uh, a photographer of mine were actually there to shoot the full moon against the uh, one world trade. And we were initially against the uh, apartment building on the gravel. And we sort of got chased off of there. We had to get permission for the piece of land next to it, but we were able to get a very nice photo of the of a rising full moon behind the One World Trade. But I'm actually looking forward to when it is completed. What's the date that you think it's going to be completed? Well, you're not going to you're not going to pin me down to that. Um, but uh, the the kind of watershed moment is putting the bridge over Morris Ave. And, and quite honestly, the biggest part of this, this job was the political piece, you know, getting all the proper uh, permissions, uh, dealing with the, the county and the state. So uh, the, the rest is really just a matter of, of um, uh, planning and funding. Uh, so I, I, I don't think it's going to be um, a long time frame. I, I, you know, don't hold me this to this, but I think uh, within two years, um, the, the rudimentary form of it will be completed. What's nice about the park line, you could add amenities all along it. And that's why I almost don't want to over plan because you can learn a lot, just like how sometimes, um, you know, paths on, on, a, on a campus, they want to see where people walk on the grass before they put down the path. So we kind of taking that approach a little bit. There, there is a, a plan for a viewing deck because um, I remember, not you, but I remember that little kerfuffle because there was a, a kind of a not in my backyard person um, uh, in those apartment buildings who was somewhat um, hostile to anybody in the area, even though the land was not land that was um, part of the apartment building. Um, but we've largely dealt with all of that, uh, but we do want to have a, um, a little perch with um, you know, those uh, magnifying, uh, those uh, pay binoculars. So folks can really take advantage of that uh, that overlook to uh, Manhattan. So, uh, so where was the one picture you took of the skyline taken? Where was that picture taken? That picture was taken from the top of my SUV. I see. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anyone else here? Yes. I can, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to answer it. One, where are Broad Street? Exactly. Two, how do you get into Bryant Park? Is that all railroad? So yeah, great question. So the question, the questions um, 
or how do you access the park line from Broad Street and how does it get to Bryant Park? So um, I'll take the, the, the first part first. Um, I, I, I had a lot of slides here. One I wanted to include was something called what three words. What three words is an app, which is wonderful. It takes the entire earth and it breaks it into um, three square yard squares. So like there's a spot in the middle of the ocean that has three random English words and you put it in and you can go, go to that spot. So what we've done until we get you know, that, last, that last slide with the really fancy covered bridge, that would be the Broad Street entrance. Currently, that apartment building, that's the entrance. So you, go, you don't park in that parking lot because I will hear from those uh, folks. <laughs> park or walk, ride your bike to that parking lot right across from Salerno Duane. At the end of the parking from, from where? Salerno Duane, the Ford dealership. Oh, the Ford dealership. Yeah, the Ford dealership there. So it's right across the street from that. That parking lot, you walk to the eastern end of it, and you'll see a, little, you know, a relatively big sign, says Summit Park Line, and that's where uh, you access it. We do have at the trailhead a little stone that has the three words for the trailhead. So we'll still post them, but um, it's a great little app. Like if you're parking on a big grass parking lot at a carnival and you want to send the three words for where you are to your friends and neighbors to meet you, you can you know, find your way to that app. But um, it's a little bit of an aside. Now, at the other end, on Bryant Park, the plan currently is, as it comes to um, uh, the road there, which is that, uh, what's that, that's not what it's Chumpike, to put a crosswalk. I recently <laughs> had conversations with the county, Ron Zuber in particular is the commissioner, and they promised if we get to Bryant Park, they'll reinstall a bridge on the county's dime, not ours. Back over, you know, when you go into Baltus Wall, you can see the, the abutments for the old bridge. They would put that bridge in. I mean, we already got one bridge. I think that's enough of an ask for the foundation. Um, so the county said they would, um, and, and because of our efforts, it's lit a fire at the state level and the county level to get this done. There's a Facebook group of a, uh, called uh, Union County Rail Trail that um, popped up about two years ago uh, in response to what we're doing because they want to continue it all the way down to New Orange or Kenilworth, which is where the, the 11 miles ends. So you're welcome. Okay, Roger Burns. Doctor, I, I think you've just answered my question about interest in uh, extending the trail beyond the uh, borders of Bryant Park. Thank you. Yeah, to that point, we have a resolution from all but one of the municipalities in support of the rail trail project um, all the way down to the East Coast Greenway. So again, the, 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 the political piece is really the, the rate limiting step for all of this. And that's why um, we, we helped that organization with some of the model documentation that we use to kind of get this going. Doug? Uh, when I was a program chairman, I must have been at least 15 years ago, I had a lawyer of summer named Hugo Paul. I know you go. He became a member. He did a program on this. I'm glad to see it progress. Well, full disclosure, um, it's a little bit of enlightened self-interest, too, because those of you in the audience who may have remembered in the early 2000s, there was uh, some activity by the county freeholders to reactivate the rail line to haul trash mm -hmm. all the way up it. So from Kenilworth to Summit, trash trains, which you know what comes, the vermin come following with that. So it, it, it got... Uh, derailed a little bit, so to speak. But one of the other motivators, you know, remember I was doing this, starting this at the time I was still sitting member of the Common Council, is once you put up a park, it's gonna be really hard to reactivate a railway and put trash through. Um, so th that's not the prime motivator, but it was, um, as I said, a little bit of light self-interest in getting the project going. When did they take the tracks? Uh, I have actually photos of that. I believe it was 2002 or three, real grainy black and white photos, but they did it at night, bought in a large crane, lifted it up. Because I, I, you know, I've lived in Summit a long time. I remember, you know, trucks every once in a while getting stuck underneath there, and, and we, we're definitely contemplating that, uh, uh, avoiding that with the new bridge. 
There's no further questions online. And any other questions in the in the audience? No. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, John Dory. By the way, uh, I left the merch here. Anybody who wants a Summer Park Line shirt, hat, or maple syrup, help yourself. Dr. Rubino, we want to thank you for what I think was the most entertaining, enlightening uh, presentation. We have two ways of saying thank you. Number one is a certificate you can see here on the monitor. Okay, thank you. And in the corner of it is an orchid. Uh, Summit, as you may know, because you know a lot of history around here, Summit was a major orchid producer in the country in 1930. And so the old guard adopted it as their symbol. So that's number one. Number two, so here's your certificate. Thank you. Number two is an old guard salute. Thank you very much for this. I really think the world of this organization is quite, quite enlightening. <laughs> Well thank, thank you, John, and thank you, uh, Dr. Rubino. Thank you. Thank you for your drive, and more importantly, thank you for making things happen. You're far more difficult.